Hi everybody. Okay, so hopefully you're joining from um, the back of watching the previous video, which was about Henry VIII and the Reformation. Um, in this video, we are going to have a look at Edward VI and what he did after Henry VIII had died and how he changed the church um, for the better or for the worse, depending on which um, religion you followed, whether you're Protestant or Catholic. So let's start then by having a look at a bit of inf the sorry a bit of background about Edward if you're not familiar with Edward let's just have a look at his life so he's born on the 8th uh, sorry on the 12th of October 1537 his father is King Henry VIII and his mother is Jane Seymour so his mother his third wife Jane Seymour but she died unfortunately just a few days after he was born. Um, so he, grew, he grows up without a mother. Henry VIII does remarry, um, but he is educated along with Elizabeth I. And he grows up mainly uh, as, a, as a Protestant. And Henry dies when Edward was only nine years old. And because he was his only son, at this point, Henry does have three children. He has Mary first with Catherine of Aragon. Then he has Elizabeth with Anne Boleyn. And then he has um, Edward with Jane Seymour. Now, because the other two are women, even though they're older than Edward, they are discounted from the line of succession. So they don't become queen yet. Um, Edward comes first. That, that's not the case anymore. That's not the way the royal family works. Now, if there were, if there was a, um, a princess, she would become queen before the man because times have changed now, but um, men came first in the line of succession. So Edward becomes the king when he's only nine years old. Okay. Now, because he's only nine years old, he is appointed a protector. And this is an, an adult that helped look after the country until Edward was old enough to do so himself. OK, so I want you to think about now you might be 11 or 12 years old. Just have a think back to maybe when you were in year four or year five. If you somebody came to you and said, look, you are now the ruler of England, you are now the king or the queen of England. Can you do it? I always ask that question to my year sevens and they always go, yeah, I could do it, I could do it. But if you really thought about it, could you really rule the country? You're not like the Queen now. You're not there um, as sort of just somebody that goes along to these things and signs orders. You've got no government. You've got, as in, there's no prime minister. You are the person in charge. Could you lead that army? Could you make all of those decisions and run the country? Probably not at nine years old. Now, from Edward being very young, he has been brought up to know that he will be the King of England. So he's been educated um, in that manner. He's been educated to be able to understand what's going on, but still nine years old is very, very young. Now, as I just said, Edward is brought up as a Protestant. So he decides, um, as does this man, Edward Seymour, who is his Lord Protector, he is a Protestant as well. After Henry changed the church from, from Catholic to Protestant and Edward, both Edwards, Edward the King and Edward Seymour decide that the country is now going to become even more Protestant. Okay, so let's have a look at what Edward did. Okay, so Henry, as we said in the last video, and if you weren't in, if you haven't seen that video, we'll just have a little bit of a recap now. So Henry had removed the Pope as head of the church, but he hadn't changed the church very much. Now, I did say at the end of the last video that Henry changed the religion of England very much for selfish reasons. OK, he wanted the money from the church. He wanted to be able to divorce his wife and he wanted to have the power and the control to himself. However, he was still a Catholic in his heart okay when he worshipped he still worshipped as a catholic however edward didn't edward was very much a protestant so when edward was king major changes to the church um took place so laws were passed now that's important this isn't just oh if you want your church to be like this and everybody can just decide what they want their church to be like 
the country was one under Edward, okay? And you had to change your church based on the laws that he had brought in. So churches were more simple. Stained glass windows and pictures were removed and the furniture within churches became very basic and plain. Okay, so the important thing about the Protestant religion is it is all focused on worship. Okay, what they want to get rid of is anything that's going to interfere. So there's, there's no distractions from God. Okay, if you go into a Catholic church and you look at all the stained glass and you look at the beautiful carvings, you do kind of get swept away in it. What the Protestants wanted to do was strip it back and just to say, look, it's you and God, and that is it. You go to a church to worship, you go to a church to be connected with God. That is God's home. Okay, that is God's house. So the churches were very basic, very plain. The services themselves became more simple. So again, this word simple. People could understand what was being said. Now, this is really, really important. So services were in English. Previously, the, church, the services had been in Latin, okay, which was the language that very many people didn't understand. So you, people in the Catholic world would go to church, not necessarily understand what they were being told, what they were actually worshipping. They just did it not always, but a lot of the time out of fear. So they could understand the messages of the Bible now. They could understand what the priest was saying to them, which is really important and really good for a lot of people. Not everybody agreed with it, but everybody could now access the religion. Okay, so Archbishop Cranmer, which we know became the Archbishop under Henry VIII, wrote a prayer book also in English. So again, the Bible's in English, they've got a book of common prayer, which means everybody is saying the prayers together in the English language. Priests did not have to dress in the bright clothing on, like, the Catholic, like in the Catholic Church, so priest clothes are very plain, they're very simple again, and they were allowed to marry, okay? I want you to remember that fact for the next video where we're going to have a look at Mary, because um, that's not quite the same. So in the Catholic religion, priests aren't allowed to marry or weren't allowed to marry because the idea was they were already married. They were married to the church. They were married to the congregation. They were married to the people. They didn't have time to be devoted to a wife because they were devoted to the job. OK, they were they, they were not female priests. All the priests were male and they were already committed to God. They were committed to the church. So there was no need for them to marry anybody else. The king remained as head of the church. So again, we still don't have the Pope. We've got Edward as the head of the church. And all of these changes were a major break from what the Catholic Church had been like. Right, so life had changed for everybody because, and I can't stress this enough, religion really was people's lives, okay? The, the, the lives and the communities revolved around the church. Everybody went to church every Sunday. They probably went much um, more often than that as well. So it really, really is every aspect of people's lives that are changing. And some people agreed with these changes, some people didn't. But like I said, what is key here is that these changes were law. You didn't have a choice, okay? So let's have a look at then a, a little visual of what is like a spot the difference of what the differences were between the Catholic and the Protestant church. So this is the inside of um, a Catholic church. So remember, we were talking about in the um, Henry VIII video about the wealth of the Catholic church and why he wanted this money. So we've got gold and these really would have been gold. These, these wouldn't have been colored gold. So you've got gold crosses, you've got gold candlesticks, and all of this Henry could now seize. And because the Protestant church didn't have these decorations, he could just take all of that gold and do with it what he wanted. He could have it for himself, he could melt it down, he could resell it. Okay, so they've got pictures to explain Bible stories. Have a think why they would need pictures. They would need these pictures because the stories in the Bible were in Latin and the people couldn't understand them. So they needed the pictures. Expensive robes. So again, we've got money, which could be going to the king. 
Um, we've got stained glass windows, which um, in the Protestant eyes would be seen as a distraction to worship. And then we've got, you can't see it, it's been cut off here, but we have statues, okay? And in the Protestant church, they believed that you needed to worship God directly, okay? So we don't have statues and things to worship through because the idea in the, in the um, Protestant church is that you go to church to connect directly with God. Okay, so have a look at this, have a look at, um, oh, and here, sorry, again, a screen to separate the priest from the worshippers, but again, we go directly to God in the Protestant church. So have a look at how elaborate that is, all the different colours, all the expense in that church, compared to a um, Protestant church, okay? So we've got the Lord's Prayer and parts of the Bible in English, so we no longer have um, any pictures because we don't need them people can understand what's being said we've got a very simple again these words simple and basic wooden table which is very inexpensive which means that the king can keep the money for other things he doesn't have to send it spend it on the church um, plain clothes for the priests so they weren't wearing anything expensive or elaborate we've got the royal coat of arms OK, and we've got because that because remember, um, in the Protestant church, the king is the head of the church and that his symbol to rem that is his symbol to remind everybody that he's the head of that church. We've got the pulpit for preaching. So people will come, they would listen to the priest and then they would worship God. Um, stained glass windows smashed and replaced with plain glass. So remember no distractions here and we've got the screen has been removed so there are no barriers between um, the people and God okay so in the way that people worship a lot has changed but a lot has also physically changed, okay, if we look at these two. So it's a massive difference for people who've been used to the top picture all of their lives, going to church and actually experiencing the bottom. All of the ceremony, all of the, not all of the celebration, but all the elaborateness of the church is being taken away and replaced by something a lot more simple and a lot more accessible, okay? But it does not mean that everybody was happy with this because their way and their beliefs, their way of worship, of worshiping and their beliefs of how they connected with God had changed. And that would take a long time for people to actually get used to. Now, unfortunately, people didn't have time to get used to that because Edward was a very sick child and did not actually live very long. He actually died when he was 16 years old. So he only reigned for seven years. Um, and he actually dies in 1553. Now, obviously, in 1553, he's 16 years old. He is unmarried, which means that he has no children. So his successor is actually somebody he appoints called the Seven Day Queen, is a woman called, or a girl, I should say, called Lady Jane Grey. Now, Lady Jane Grey um, is a Protestant, and she is the one who is appointed to take over from Edward. Now, I'm going to cover in the next video, the next queen who is Mary the first, okay? Not Lady Jane Grey. Now, the reason that Lady Jane Grey doesn't actually become queen is because she is a Protestant, Mary is a Catholic, and she has a lot of support, and her supporters actually round up Lady Jane Grey and they execute her. So she isn't queen for very long at all. She didn't ever want to become queen it's a tragic story of Lady Jane Grey 
um, she's very young and she isn't really involved in this at all. It's it's just men telling her what is happening. And uh, Mary's supporters actually go and execute her and put Mary on the throne. So in the next video, we will be having a look at, look at Mary the first and how she completely changes everything that we've just talked about and returns to Catholicism. Okay, so please join me in the next video. Thank you for joining me in this one. Hopefully you've got a good overview now of Edward and we'll just go and completely get rid of all those changes that we've just made and go back to Catholicism in the next video.